Welcome to my talk, Deep DB, Learn from Data and Not from Queries. My name is Benjamin, and this is joint work with Andreas, Moritz, Alejandro, Christian, and Carsten. The idea of learned database components is to replace parts of your database with a machine learning model. And it's a very active field. So people have, for instance, replaced an entire query optimizer or the cardinality estimation component of a database. And the results are very compelling. But today, the predominant approach is workload-driven learning. So I'm going to explain how this works for cardinality estimation, but it translates also to query optimization. So for instance, here, if you want to train the model, you have to run a large representative workload on a database, so many SQL queries, then collect the results, so in this case, cardinalities, and then use this to train model. And then at inference time, use this model for new workloads. So you featureize the query for which you want to know the cardinality and the model predicts um, a good cardinality. And as I said, the results are very compelling. However, there are also a few downsides. You have to run 10,000s of queries on a potentially large database to just train your model. So that's very costly. And you have to do it again once you see updates because the cardinalities might change. And this workload-driven approach was not only used for cardinality estimation, in fact, it's the predominant approach today, and most learned database components come with the downsides I depicted here. That is why we suggest data-driven learning with DeepDB. Here, the idea is that the model learns the complex data distribution of a relational schema. And then at runtime, we use this to solve the task at hand. So for instance, here for cardinality estimation, we want to know how many customers we have that are from the EU and younger than 30. We would compute the corresponding probability, multiply it with the number of customers we have, and end up with the correct result. The advantage here is that we do not have to run a training workload, since the model learns directly from the data. Moreover, the models we use are updatable, so we do not have to retrain after database updates. In order to understand how our approach works, we use cardinality estimation as the main task in this talk. However, deep debate can support other tasks as well, such as approximate curve processing, as we show in our paper. Let me quickly recap cardinality estimation. So we are given a query with a certain join and a certain filter predicates, and then we come up with a query plan. For instance, here we first join customers and orders, and then the order lines. And then we might ask ourselves the question, well, is this a good join ordering? Should I maybe first uh, join orders and order lines instead? And this depends on the intermediate cardinalities. So for instance, here, the intermediate cardinality of customers and orders, so how many tuples do we have, is 5 million. If we first joined orders and order lines instead, we would have just 1 million tuples. So we would come up with a much better plan. So the task of cardinality estimation uh, is to predict such intermediate cardinalities such that we can come up with a good join ordering before we actually execute the plan. The classical approach for cardinality estimation are histograms. And here you assume complete independence. So you ignore any correlations you might have in your data. For instance, if you want to know the probability that a product was sold online for less than $10, you would look up the marginal probabilities, so 80% and 60% with your histograms, multiply them, and end up with a probability that might be wrong because um, there might be correlations in the data. So for instance, products that are sold online might be cheaper in general. And this causes your cardinality estimates to be way off. And this in turn results in suboptimal join orderings. And that is why workload-driven cardinality estimation was suggested. Here correlations are learned by a deep neural network, so we do not ignore them any longer. However, it also comes with the general downsides of workload-driven learning motivating our approach. In contrast, DeepDB is entirely data-driven. This is enabled by two core contributions. First, we introduce a new class of models, namely relational sum prog networks, which capture correlations present in the data. To scale to larger schemas, we do not just learn one RSPN for the entire database, but learn several models over preferably correlated joints of tables. Moreover, these models are completely updatable without any retraining. Second, we introduce probabilistic query compilation, which allows us to combine various models to answer a query. For instance, we can still estimate a cardinality query that spans several models as depicted on the right. These two ingredients allow DeepDB to learn the data distribution of a complex relational schema. In the remainder of the talk, I will first explain how relational sum product networks work, and then come to the scaling tool schema using probabilistic query compilation. Let me explain how relational sum prog networks work in the single table case. The idea is to recursively create row clusters, introducing sum nodes, 
and split independent columns, which introduces product nodes in turn. For instance, if we have a customer sample, we want to learn a model for the probability distribution of age and region. We would first create the cluster of older European customers and the cluster for younger Asian customers. This introduces a sum node. Within those clusters, age and region are independent, and we can thus introduce a product node splitting both columns. For the remaining clusters, we can learn traditional histograms which make up the leaf nodes. We can now compute probabilities on arbitrary columns. For instance, if we want to know how many customers are European and younger than 30, we would push the conditions to the leaves, multiply proc nodes, and compute the weighted sum and sum nodes. The models also support efficient updates. I will come to that later. First, I'm going to explain how this technique can be used for joints on a large schema. We can naively generalize the technique to joints. So for instance, for the schema of customers, orders, and order lines, we could learn a model for every possible join. And then at runtime, if we see a query, for instance, for the join of orders and order lines, we would compute the probability using the corresponding model. However, this does not scale to large schemas, since we have to learn many different models, even for such a small schema that we've depicted here. In contrast, deep debate scales to schemas efficiently. We first compute the pairwise correlation of the tables. And based on this information, we decide for which joints we learn models. So for instance, here we have learned a model over the join of customers and orders, since there's a large correlation between those two tables. In addition, we have learned a single order line model. At runtime, we can now query a partial relation of some product network or combine several of them. We coin this probabilistic query compilation. And of course, if we apply this technique recursively, we can handle arbitrary joints on the schema without knowing which joints are going to appear at runtime. As mentioned before, relational sum product networks also support efficient updates. The idea is to do a top-down pass of updated tuples through the model. When some nodes are passed, the weights are adapted, and finally, the leaves are adapted as well. Let's assume we want to insert a customer from Europe into our previously learned model. Since the tuple belongs to the left row cluster of older European customers, we increase the left weight. At the product node, we split the tuple before we finally update the histogram. If we now want to insert a new customer, the process repeats again. So we increase the sum weight, split at the product node, and update the leaf histograms. The updated RSPN now represents the database where these two additional customers are inserted. Our derived update procedure is very efficient since we do not have to retrain the model. We evaluate the accuracy of our data-driven approach for cardinality estimation. In particular, we use the standard job light benchmark and report the Q error. This is the factor we are also one is best and it goes up to infinity. We compare against MSCN, which is a workload-driven approach, and state-of-the-art classical approaches. As we can see, DeepDBA is orders of magnitude more accurate and requires only megabytes of storage. We also varied the number of joint tables and predicates. As we can see, DeepDBA also generalizes much better to larger joints than the competitors. This shows that the combination of several relational sum product networks works well in practice. A recent paper named NeuroCard uses similar techniques as we do and also confirms our finding that data-driven models are more suited for cardinality estimation. We also investigated the effectiveness of our update procedure. For this, we used the job light benchmark. This time, however, we only insert movies up to a certain year. We learn the models as before and then update without retraining for the remaining movies. We finally compare the accuracies on the full job light benchmark. So um, in the first configuration, no updates are present. In the second configuration, we update with 5% of the data. As we can see, the accuracies are quite stable. We even experimented with large update rates of up to 40% and see stable performance. Besides retaining high accuracies, we are also very efficient achieving 55,000 tuples per second as our update rate. To wrap it up, DeepDB proposes data-driven learning. So we do not have to run a workload to gather training data. Instead, RSPNs learn the correlations in complex relational schemas. At runtime, we can combine several models to handle arbitrary joins using probabilistic query compilation. We outperform both learned and classical approaches for cardinality estimation. In the paper, we also show that we can outperform state-of-the-art approaches for approximate query processing, and we efficiently support updates. By the way, the code is open source, so please feel free to experiment with it. So with that, arigato, and I'm now ready to take questions.